Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are continuing our budget deck text. This is Shadow Facts. I'm calling Is It Free? I guess the full name is Shadow Facts Lord of Horses, but I feel like you probably are not too concerned who the boss of the horses is. Anyway. All right, so Shadow Facts Lord of Horses is three red, uh, red white for a four, four. With haste, all horses have haste. Uh, one of Shadow Facts's abilities there. And again, th this is Boros, so the uh, deck's um, color identity is Boros. And, uh, sorry, horses you control have haste. Okay, sure. Whenever Shadow Facts Lord of Horses attacks, you may put a creature card with lesser power from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. So this is just going to keep putting extra creatures into the battlefield. Um, they do come in tapped and attacking, which can be very useful as well. Um, you can kind of surprise people with a lot of little tricks with that. Um, we're going to look at some of those. Anywho. First note, um, this is designed, I think, partly as a commander with a, like, kind of horse kindred or horse type in mind. There are not enough horses to do that, or at least not enough, enough, uh, decent horses to do that. Um, I'm sure someone else can probably correct me, but I looked at doing the horse typo, or horse kindred with this, and was like, yeah, eh, not crazy about that. Anyway, so yeah, not going to go with the horses. Wizards, more horses, please. Not that wizards listens to me, I guess, but anyway. Um, the second ability is what stands out to me. And what the build is focused around is this build is very heavily focused on the second ability, right? Not the first one. Um, as an attack trigger, you may put a creature with lower attack power onto the battlefield. Um, so again, it, the only real limitation there is that it has to go, it has to be lower attack power. This is increasable. Uh, I almost said incredible and crazy because. You can find all kinds of creatures that have like a 7 or 8 casting cost and have power like 3 or lower. And they have just some really great abilities and they're very budget. So yeah, this is kind of what this deck specializes in. It's like all kinds of creatures that are going to come in and just be like super useful, but you're going to be casting them without like even paying any mana. So really abusing that. So again, yeah, this is easy to abuse. Again, high CMC, low power creatures is what we really want to look for. Um, hopefully you're going to be able to keep at least one in your hand at all times. So yeah, most of the creatures in this have uh, attack power three or lower. There are some that have four or even, I think at four is the highest other than him. But as soon as Shadow Effects gets a plus one, plus one counter, already you're good again, right? Or if you equip something that gives Shadow Facts um, any kind of boost to attack, then yeah, it's very easy to get more value out of that. Okay, so the main theme here is uh, value from free creature drops. Sub themes. Okay, so the main thing here is just getting that value. Keep your hand. So this is not just card draw, this is finding cards that you can keep putting in and yeah, being able to scry, all kinds of things like that. Keeping things that you're actually going to play in, in your hand. Uh, Commander Aggression, again, he has to attack to trigger his ability, so we got to look at ways to make him be able to attack and keep attacking without just getting knocked out over and over again, right? I keep saying he, I guess I don't know, Shadow FX? Sounds like a guy's name, maybe? It's a horse, so I don't know. Plus one, plus one counters. Again, great with shadow effects because those plus one, plus ones are gonna mean casting higher uh, attack power spells. And as I said, we do have some that are four. I think four is the ceiling though. Um, I can't think of any that are above that. Anthems, another way, great way to just like increase the uh, what you can cast for free is anthems right just giving him even if it's a temporary boost that's fine it's going to work for this ability even if he gets only plus two for the attack that's still something uh creature with power five or lower that you can cast for free 
I guess uh, the other thing to point out, it is not casting, but anyway, I'm gonna talk about that in a sec. Tokens and ETB double up. So getting a lot of value out of those ETB triggers. Uh, we wanna do that first of all with um, Shadow Facts and his attack trigger and also be able to like double down and be able to use them again. The deck price is just under 30 bucks. Um, I expected this one to come out more. I think that just the fact that you can get that real kind of boost, boost to your uh, value from having that, those creatures that are high mana cost, low attack power. In most decks, that's a bad thing. And with Shadow Facts, it's like an upside. So that's where you get the real kind of like budget out of there, the budget value, if you want to say, but anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. And this I have made this deck list is on TCG. Uh, the the price is TCG value. Yeah, uh, but I can't even talk today. The the price is listed by the TCG market value, and um, you can check the actual deck on Moxfield.com. Okay, part one: Shadow Facts, Lord of Horses, about the commander. All right, so we've already talked about him, but as another quick review here, um, <clears throat> having options that allow you to get a lot of value out of dropping creatures is key, right? As I said, we do have a lot of those. Also, we would use plus one, plus one counters and anthem effects to increase power of all creatures and allow shadow effects to cheat in great bigger creatures, right? So it's not just about getting the creatures in, well, that's the first step, of course, but once they're in, we want them to be valuable. How do we do that? We use anthems, we use plus one, plus one counters. So it comes in with like two power or something. And then pretty quickly, if not immediately, all of a sudden it's like a six or higher, right? That's, uh, that's going to be just a lot of value, especially when we're talking about like tokens and things like that. Tokens, of course, that doesn't really count for Shadow Facts' ability, but for the Anthems, I mean, and plus one, plus one counters, anyway. High Synergy cards. Okay, first of all, Whisper Silk Cloak. This is three mana and equip two for this equipment. Equip creature can't be blocked and has Shroud. Can't be blocked is the main thing we want there. Shroud is nice for protection. It also stops effects from, like, targeting him. So if we want to, like, Put plus one plus one counters on him specifically we can't do it i'm saying him again even i don't i think shadow F facts is a him anyway it says lord of horses not lady of horses so anyway um i'm thinking about that too much uh but yeah the not being blocked is the main thing that i look for there because yeah you just have to keep sending shadow facts into combat over and over and over and you just want to like get him blocked or something. If they are just like, oh, dragon block, done. Okay, back to the command zone, bring him out again, and then start all over again. Uh, that, you don't want to do that. Horn of the Mark. Okay, so this is very different from what I was just talking about. So this is two for a legendary artifact. Um, uh, so this card is another important piece in this deck. Getting bonuses for more creatures attacking and keeping creatures in your hand is what this is all about. So whenever two or more creatures you control attack a player, so you need to attack with at least two creatures for this to activate. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand and then put the rest of the bottom of your library in a, in a random order. Um, so you're going to take one, put it straight into your hand, hopefully one that you're going to be able to use Shadow Facts to cheat in. So this is all about keeping your hand stocked is much more of an issue with this deck because usually you might cast like early game one spell, um, play one land, and a lot of times that'd be about it. With Shadow Effects, you're guaranteed that like extra drop, right? So if you're usually going to be casting or using two cards in a turn, you're going to be using three. And if it's like mid to late game, you're probably like casting two spells, doing one land drop, and then you're going to have Shadow Facts' ability, putting a card, a creature card in. So now you're looking at four instead of three. So you, you need the card draw and you need to keep like stocking up creatures very quickly. And this is going to help with that. 
Especially, I love it on the attack trigger, because that is just something that works with this commander. Bastion Protector, again, we're back to protecting, well, per protecting your commander, also making it easy to get those triggers off. Uh, for two and a white, a 3-3, three, three. again, 3-3 three, three means we get to cheat it in if we want to. It only costs three mana, so maybe this is not the top thing to do, but anyway. Commander creatures you control have plus two, plus two, and have indestructible. So yeah, indestructible and plus two, plus two. Again, so anything four or lower attack power, I'm pretty sure that's the ceiling on creatures in this deck is four attack power. So you can cheat in any other creature probably, and indestructible. So you can just keep attacking and not worrying about it. Um, whew, really nice, really nice. Uh, fun. next up is Mir Style Master. Okay, so this is four red, red, six CMC high, right? But a three, three. Once again, six to cast really high. As soon as you've got um, Chet FX in play, Chet FX has haste, gives itself haste. So yeah, you can attack right away and throw this straight into the battlefield. Um, has backup one. When this creature enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Great. And when this creature attacks for each attack, tapped attacking modified creature you control, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that creature. Exile the tokens at the beginning. So, yeah. Yeah, attacking modified creature, okay? We've got lots of ways to put plus ones, plus one counters on things. And lots of ways to like make tokens and all that kind of stuff. So she doesn't right wait. Yeah, she does need she does need to attack to activate this, but you're gonna be able to just like make a whole mess of like indestructible or not indestructible of like temporary token creatures that you don't really care about. This could easily go into like a win con type of thing. Um so this will uh just Create a whole bunch of extra value for you. Yeah. Shivan Phoenix. Again, four red red for a three four. So once again, immediately um, Shadow FX can uh, cheat this in. And yeah, this is a flying three four. So that's nice. Having a flying blocker. When Shivan Phoenix is put into a graveyard from play, return it to its owner's hand. So basically, you're going to cheat this in by attacking with Shadow, uh, Shadow Fax, and then um, I keep almost saying Shadow Flank. I don't know why. I guess horses have flanks. Anyway, and then yeah, it'll come in tapped and attacking. So even if it does get blocked and taken out, goes to the graveyard, straight back to your hand. Back on the battlefield, and then yeah, you can either keep him on the battlefield. Hopefully as a flying blocker to discourage other flyers from attacking you. Or you can, yeah, also just, like, take huge advantage of this by, like, sending it to your graveyard, straight back to your hand, then back to the battlefield, tapped on attacking, hopefully with anthem effects, right, to increase that attack power. So you're going to have that, this thing just, like, coming at people constantly. You, they're kind of not going to be able... They got to exile it basically to get rid of it. Otherwise, you're just going to keep bouncing it straight back to the battlefield. Rumor Gatherer. Okay, this is going back to that like keeping your hand stocked and controlling what you draw. So for uh, one white white is a two one. Um, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. This is something that I actually kind of misread before. The scry one does happen every time another creature enters every even after two it keeps working okay if this is the second time this ability ha has resolved this turn draw a card instead so the first time you're going to scry one second time draw a card and then scry every time after that for every other creature that enters we've got all kinds of token uh, effects that can make token creatures that's going to set off this a whole bunch of times. So you're probably going to be like scrying multiple times per turn and drawing every turn, hopefully. So yeah, that uh, this will allow you to set up what you want very uh, reliably. 
Balefire Liege. Okay, so this is two and uh, red or white, red or white, red or white. Boros, very Boros. For a two, four that you can cheat in. Probably wouldn't. For five, maybe, I guess. But anyway, other red creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other white creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So if it's red and white, it does get both, right? Your commander gets plus two, plus two from this, which is not too shabby. Whenever you play a red spell, Balefire Liege deals three damage to target player. Whenever you play a white spell, you gain three life. Okay, if you actually... This is a cast trigger. It says play a spell. It even the has been errated to say cast. So, um, Shadow Fax's ability where you're just putting things into play, tapped and attacking, does not trigger this. This is a cast trigger. His ability is not casting the spells. It's putting them into play. It is not casting them, okay? So, yeah. If you ca uh, you know, if you, uh, Put something in that's red and white with uh, shadow effects. Kind of a maybe a downside is that this would not trigger. So you might actually want to consider if you've got something that's red and white. Um, yeah, it's any spell. A spell that's red and white, you might want to actually cast it rather than, you know, sneaking it in with a uh, with, uh, shadow effects. I don't know why I can't remember the name. Anyway, all right. Okay, well, I just had a whole bunch of technical problems. I got them sorted and then kids outside just started screaming again, which they've been doing almost constantly. But I've got Twinnings tea now, so it's okay. Oh, Twinnings. Ah, hot, hot, hot. Okay, oops. That's my fault. Anyway, the objectives. We've got the ramp. Value train win cons. I'm keeping this one very simple, um, which is good for me, I think, but yeah. So ramp, Rose Room Treasurer. Okay, whenever another creature in you, uh, you control enters, create a treasure token, if this is the first or second time. So the first two creatures that enter, you're making treasure tokens. Uh, once again, Rose Room Treasurer is a, a four power creature, so um, <clears throat> ugh. Shadow Facts. Oh, why can't I remember the name now? Shadow Facts would not be able to cheat him in immediately. You need some kind of bonus on Shadow Facts to be able to do that. Probably better just cash this, really. So, yeah. Anywho, but yeah. Uh, otherwise, you may pay X when you do. Rose Room Treasure deals X damage to any target. So, again, if it's the third or at the first two treasures and then after that every time a creature enters you could pay x mana and just instantly do damage x damage to any target creature player doesn't matter you can use this like as a finisher if someone's close to like being knocked out of the game just finish them off and you win okay great ramp that can be a finisher is a nice combination also this doesn't care about casting right it doesn't say a creature is cast it just enters Shadow effects will trigger this, is the point. Wayfarer's Bobble. Okay, one of the downsides of Boros is, of course, no green. So you need some ramp. Wayfarer's Bobble is always a nice way to go. Um, hopefully you don't need this for the main things. Um, I would use this to maybe get like two of each kind of basic land. Um, uh, two planes, two mounts. That way you can activate other abilities more easily. We'll get to that in a bit. Smuggler's Share. So once again, uh, two and a white for an enchantment. So once again, enchantment. Unfortunately, shadow effects can only do creatures. At the beginning of each end step, draw a card if, if, if each opponent... Oh, sorry, for each opponent who drew two or more cards this turn. So yeah, if they drew more than one card, you get to draw a card. Keeping you stocked on cards is good. Also, yeah. If they play t uh, two or more lands, you create a land, or a treasure, sorry, a treasure for each opponent who had, yeah. Again, if it more than one opponent somehow has two lands entering the battlefield under their control, you make two t treasures. So yeah, very nice kind of catch-up card. Seize the Spotlight. I've featured this one before. I love this card. I, it's going up in value finally. I think it's taken too long. 
uh, for two and a red for a sorcery. I think the kids are screaming on the other side now. Fun. Uh, each opponent chooses fame or fortune. Each player who chooses fame gain, or sorry, for each player who chooses fame, chooses fame, gain control of a creature that player controls until end of turn. Untap those creatures, they gain haste until end of turn. For each opponent who chose fortune, you draw a card and create a treasure token. So either they hand over a creature for a turn, or they let you draw a card and create a treasure. It's not a fun choice they have to make there, right? Um, they do not get to choose the creature, you get to choose the creature. If they have no creatures, they'll probably choose creature, right? They'll say, okay, fame, and I have no creature, so you get nothing. So make sure using this at the right time is kind of the only hold up there. But yeah, pretty easy to at least get one or two treasures off of that and draw two cards. Um, very worthwhile. Skyclave Relic. I think I should be putting this in everything. I had this on my list of uh, favorite mana rocks for under a dollar, and um, a whole bunch of people panned it. Yeah, because they, they want the two cost ones. Yeah, yeah. It costs three, and the kicker is three to make three indestructible mana rocks that create any color. Six mana in total to make three, that's two per. Hmm. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that, guys. Yeah. Snarky people are not good at math, I think. But anyway, okay. <laughs> I'm being snarky saying it, so maybe I'm bad at math. Uh, anyway, value train. Uh, the horn of the mark we talked about already. Again, just if you got this down, make sure you have two creatures attacking, even if it's two tokens. Fine. Get them attacking just so you can keep getting cards into your hand. Or creatures into your hand, maybe. Aurelia, the law above. Um... Okay, so she is a 4-4. Four, four. Once again, Shadow, uh, Shadowfax is going to need some kind of bonus to be able to cheat her in for free. Flying Vigilance Haste for a 4. Whew. Um, whenever a player attacks with three or more creatures, you draw a card. Again, make sure you're attacking with multiple creatures. Uh, someone else can also attack with multiple creatures and you draw a card. Whenever you, a player attacks with five or more creatures, Really, the law above deals three damage to each of your opponents, and you gain three life. So yeah, real. If someone else has got like a token deck where they're looking to just like swing with a bunch of tokens all the time, you're just going to keep pecking away at them, and you can do this on your turn very easily with all of your tokens. And also remember, both of these will trigger together. If you attack with five, you're also attacking with three, so you're drawing a card. All your opponents lose three life, and you gain three life. Um, they just the value, the value. And probably you're attacking with tokens that you don't really care about anyway. Anim Pakal, Thousandth Moon. So uh, one red white boros for a two one. Whenever you attack with one or more non gnome creatures, we don't have gnomes other than what she makes. Put a plus one plus one counter on Anim. Pakal, Pakal. I always want to say Palak. Did I say Palak before? Anyway. Then create X11 Colors Gnome Artifact Creature Tokens that are tapped and attacking, where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on her. So basically, she's going to get a bunch of plus one plus one counters, and then you're going to keep throwing more on there, and then when anything attacks, she does not have to attack to trigger this, right? Whenever you attack with one or more non-known creatures, just attack with one thing that is not a gnome. Doesn't matter what. Can, it doesn't say non-token either, right? If you attack with one token, she's going to make a whole bunch of tokens that are also attacking. As long as that token is not a gnome, I should point out. But yeah, you're going to be able to just pile on those plus one plus one counters and uh, start really going to town. Uh, just throwing in every attack, you're going to be setting these off. Hopefully, just without any kind of like really concern or anything. You don't really have to do any like mental math or anything either, where you're like worried about who's going to block and how. You're just like, go, go, go. Yep, doesn't matter. The mirror style master I talked about already. So yeah, this is one where, remember mirror style master, 
uh, for each attacking modified creature you control. Yeah, it is attacking modified creature, so they do have to attack, but any creature, all right? So any creature, as long as they are modified. And Calamity, Galloping Inferno. Okay, this is our other copy card, and he has Saddle 1. For, sorry, 4 Green Green for a 4-6, so once again, 4. Can't immediately uh, cheat it in, but any kind of bonus on shadow facts and he can anyway has haste here to get haste anyway because he's a horse um saddle one just means you tap something and it can be something that just entered the battlefield summoning sickness does not affect saddle uh whenever so uh whenever it attacks while saddled choose a non-legendary creature that settled it this turn and create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. Sacrifice that token to begin the next end step. Repeat this process once. Oh boy. Okay, so repeat this process once. So that's going to make two. They have to be non-legendary. That's it. Non-legendary, but you're going to get two of them. So if they've got ETBs like Meteor Golem, where it just destroys a non-land permanent, you're doing that twice every time. And you're going to cheat Meteor Golem into play and use the ETB. Meteor Golem, the downside is that 7 mana for a 3 3. So, outside of most decks, it's not good. With this deck, it's amazing, right? You're just going to, you're going to cast them without casting them. Sorry, you're going to cheat them in, and then you're just going to copy, copy, copy until, like, you blow up everything. So, yeah, really mean. So win con number one, we've got commander damage. Okay, Shadow Facts is already a 4-4, not a bad start, but the main thing we wanna do is like get extra attack power, of course. We have plenty of anthems. We got plenty of plus one, plus one counters, but the Spear of Leonidas, one of the modes is double strike. Double strike makes it much, much easier. Remember, commander damage, 21 damage. 21, you can knock anyone out of the game, so yeah. Even if he gets, let's say, uh, an Anthem effect where he's got plus two to his attack. That's six already. Okay, double strike is at 12. Legion leadership. Until end of turn, double targets, cre target creature's power, and it gains first strike. Um, so you're going to double its power with Legion leadership. So even if you start with six, you're doing 12 with double strike, 24 with Legion leadership and double strike. You're already one-shotting anyone in the game with just like that. So yeah, you can just really um, take advantage of it. One thing you got to make sure if you want to do this, you got to you not. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to talk really quickly. It doesn't work for me. Anyway, you if you have Whisper Sub Cloak, do not equip it to your commander because then Shroud does not allow you to cast things on it either, right? So you got to make sure you don't have a shroud if you want to be able to like take advantage of this. Win con number two, gnome swarm. So anem pakal, pakal, thousandth moon. Once again, any creature attacks, she's going to make any non-gnome creature. So she's going to make like a pile of gnomes equal to her plus one plus one counters. And we've also got Sarah Redeemer it's for a five CMC for a two four. Once again cheat this in it's a flyer whenever a creature another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control put two plus one plus one counters on that creature so if you make this horde of gnomes one one gnomes they immediately become three threes just three threes like that just equal to the number of plus one plus one counters that you paid on one creature ah so mean finally glory if it has white i'm going to put glory in the deck you should know that um if anyone's watched some of these you're going to see have seen glory before but anyway again five mana for a three three great also because you can cheat them into play uh you but you want this in the graveyard right you want to get this sacked as quickly as possible or taken out in an attack um for two and a white, choose a color. Creatures you control gain protection from that color until the end of the turn. So you're going to, you know, give all of your creatures protection from whatever 
and then you'll attack and then all of those gnomes come in and they'll get protection from that color. And they're also going to get plus one plus or plus two plus two. So they're just getting a whole pile of like their automatic evasion, automatic three three, just like horde of creatures coming at someone. Probably just going to take them out of the game right away. Buff and evasion. Okay, so this is a very important one in this deck. So Micaeus, Micaeus, Mickey, whatever. The Lunark. X and a white. So you are going to cast him and put however many plus one plus one counters equal to X. Um, you could tap and put another plus one plus one on. Eh, maybe. Or tap and remove a plus one plus one counter to put a plus one plus one on everything else. Oh boy. Excuse me? Abzan Falconer for two and a white. A two, three without last. Eh. Each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on has flying. So Micaeus is just going to throw plus one, plus one counters on everything. And because they have that, they're all flying. Just complete evasion, whole board evasion all of a sudden. Recon craft for Theta. So flying, and when it enters the battlefield, create a zero zero blue alien creature token, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Sure. Whenever it attacks, proliferate. So if you attack with this, proliferate. Everything automatically just gets bigger. Your whole board is gonna have plus one plus ones, and an extra plus one plus one for everything on the board. Um, Flying plus two plus two minimum, and every turn is going to just get bigger. Um, yoy. A win con number four every damn turn. This is going to be like something I love to that I would love to do. It's going to be so frustrating, but yeah. Calamity. You attack with calamity, and then you, you're going to have Githsari on the battlefield. Hopefully cheated in, but anyway. You could flash him in the, as well, so it doesn't matter. But when he enters the battlefield, tap to all creatures you don't control. So you're going to make the, the token copies of this, tapped and attacking, and right when they enter the battlefield, they tap the entire your opponent's boards. So no blocking. They can't block. Also, this is so much better than just unblockable because the next player, remember, assuming there's four players, the next player is going to be like, well, I could attack the person who's actually got blockers or I've got two people who are completely open. And then the next player is going to be like, well, there's two people who can block or one person that's completely open. So yeah, kind of the last player in the rotation is probably going to be taken out by the time. You're basically painting a target on someone else's back, which is kind of the best form of uh, defense, I think. And Okay, part three, combos and tactics. So this is where I kind of like explore the sub themes and how to really get the value out of it. Um, the children have stopped screaming outside, I think. So that's nice. Keeping a hand. Once again, rumor gather, we talked about already. You keep scrying, second creature, you're gonna draw. So yeah. Secret rendezvous for two, or sorry, one white, white, a sorcery. You and target your opponent each draw three cards. Three is an insane amount of card draw for three men, especially in white. Like, this is, and you're gonna, there's always gonna probably be like the other kind of, well, <laughs> there's probably gonna be the underdog in the game, someone that you probably should help out, and yeah, just do that. It's a great little political tool. Horn of the Mark, we talked about this already. Just keeping creatures in hand, because you're always going to be like dropping an extra one probably every turn. Mentor of the Meek. We've got so many things where we have things with power two and under coming into the battlefield. We want extra value out of that. But And if you pay one mana, one colorless mana, you just get to draw a card off of that every time. So they'll be like your uh, gnome triggers, right? You're getting a whole bunch of gnomes coming into the battlefield. As many gnomes as you're making, you can just put that into mana and draw that many cards. And uh, yeah, just kind of never really have to worry about card draw again. Aurelia the Law Above, we talked about this one as well. 
just keep attacking with multiple creatures or even if you've got an uh pakal pakal i think i said palak again anyway pakal you uh you're gonna pretty much be sorted with this right this is just gonna go off also with a uh, horn of the mark is just gonna keep going off so anyway. commander aggression all right so bastion protector plus two plus two and indestructible already talked about that one as well amazing combo for this whisper spell silk cloak main thing unblockable shroud is nice for dealing with targeted removal also kind of a downside because it means you can't do things to it either right so potentially i think this is a great card but no when to use it what if you've got everything set up for like your commander damage win con if you've got a pile of plus one plus one counters on shadow facts and you've already equipped um the spear of leonidas um great throw in a wisp of cloak and just get it done otherwise ask yourself is this the correct thing to do right now unbreakable formation giving everything indestructible is great and if you cast it during your main phase everything also gets a plus one plus one counter including your commander um yeah super effective in this deck angel fire ignition so this is one uh red white boros sorcery put two plus one plus one counters on target creature great start right also it gains vigilance lifelink indestructible and haste until end of turn haste we don't care about indestructible super useful uh lifelink and vigilance sure why not right that's always good and abzan and falconer again we're going to get those plus one plus ones and we're, that's just going to turn into evasion which is great with this commander because you're going to be able to like just keep throwing your commander at someone someone without a flyer or reach and uh yeah you're all set plus one plus one counters okay Micaeus the Lunark talks about him. Bounding Felidar. Okay, this has saddle two, so you tap things with a total two power. It could be one creature, it could be more. Remember, even if there's summoning sick, doesn't matter, you can still use it. Whenever it attacks while saddled, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, gain one life for each of those creatures. So you especially if you've done your like creating gnome tokens trick one or even one time you probably have a whole pile of them you're going to like basically yeah saddle this have it attack and uh it's just gonna throw plus one plus one counters and gain you a whole bunch of life just for like doing what you want to do really incredible requisition raid okay this is still under a dollar why so for one white and then it has spree so you pay extra mana for these other other effects so for one extra mana put a plus one plus one counter on each creature target player controls so you could potentially put in another a player um i don't know why you would but it's there destroy target artifact destroy target enchantment so you could cast this for four destroy an artifact and enchantment put a plus one plus one counter on all of your creatures for four mana absolutely crazy i've got to order more of these before they go up anyway citadel siege two white white for an enchantment what we want is cons at the beginning of your uh combat on your turn put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control hopefully your commander but maybe a different creature depending on what you want to do but the, those plus one plus ones are just going to keep coming in useful uh, metastatic Evangel, or Evangel, 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 all right, uh, I suck, okay, one and a white, um, four, a three, one, when target, another target, non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate, again, just enters the battlefield, pretty much any, your tokens do not count, all right, unfortunately, they don't, but anything shadow uh shadow facts is bringing into the battlefield does so you're just going to keep proliferating getting all these triggers setting them off over and over and over especially if you get your plus one plus ones down you're going to just like bump up everything very very quickly very easily 
Um, yeah. Incredible. And Thims. Okay, Balefire Liege. Talked about him already. And Noblesse of War. So attacking creatures you control get plus two. Bit of a downside there, because it's not plus two all the time, only when they're attacking. But it does work for uh, Shadow Facts, because it's when Shadow Facts attacks that you get your uh, automatic creature in. And so that's going to let you cast any other creature in the deck, I believe. Oath Sworn Giant. Once again, six mana, you cheat him in. Anything that's six mana is supposed to get cheated in with Shadow Facts. Anyway, okay, Vigilance, other creatures you control get plus two toughness, and have Vigilance. Just your whole board can be like, you give them all flying, give them all Vigilance, right? Oy, very, very mean, but anyway. Um, and plus two toughness is a nice little extra bonus. Legion's Initiative, red creatures get plus one attack, white creatures get plus one defense. Or tough, toughness, right? Defense, bah. Anyway, so that's a nice start. Also, you can pay a red and a white and exile this. Exile all creatures you control at the beginning of next combat. Return those creatures to the battlefield under their owner's control. And those creatures gain haste until end of turn. So basically, if there's a board wipe and you're going to lose everything, do this. And you're still going to lose all of your token creatures. You're losing all your plus one, plus one counters. That's not fun. But it's better than just everything getting wiped out. And it also, I really like that it puts it back for a combat, right? A lot of times if someone's using a board wipe during their main one, they're setting, they're trying to set up the combat. So a lot of things will come back either immediately or it'll come back for like, you know, the end of turn. This is not end of turn, this is combat. So it means like if they cast a board wipe main one, Exile everything, put it back down for the combat, and you're ready to block. Basically, go attack someone else. Um, also, you're going to be able to set, reset off all the ETB triggers of your creatures. <sighs> Such a good card. Blade Historian. Again, attacking creatures you control have double strike. If you have Blade Historian, you kind of don't have to worry about uh, Spear of Leonidas, because um, for your commander damage win con, this will just do it, right? Um, a great fallback. Tokens. Dark Steel Splicer, a six and a white. Shadow Facts for a one one. Uh, so if he or another for a Rexian enters the battlefield under your, or sorry, another non-token for Rexian enters the battlefield under your control, create X three three for Rexian Golem artifact uh, creature tokens where X is the number of opponents you have. And this gives all golems indestructible. Oh boy. Okay, one... You, we only have one other Phyrexian that's a non-token in this deck. So you can only trigger this one more time. But... There's a little, uh, there's a little trickiness we got here. Whenever Dark Shield Splicer or another non-token Phyrexian enters. Or another non-token. So if you make a token copy of Dark Steel Splicer, you got that ETB again. So you can potentially just keep making these golems that are going to be three threes and indestructible, and get whatever other uh, bonuses that you manage to throw on them as well. Gets out of hand fast. Silver Wing Squadron for five and a white. Technically zero, so easy to cheat in. Flying Vigilance. Oy, oh. So, my stomach is fun today. Okay. Silverwing Squadron's power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control. Again, if you've got a Nimpala, Pakal, a Nimpakal making a whole bunch of these gnome tokens you're just going to be have a super huge creature here and whenever it attacks create a number of two two white knight creature tokens with vigilance equal to the number of opponents you have so once again if you cheat this in it comes in attacking it automatically makes those knights 
So you're gonna automatically just like bring this in without pick his casting cost and it's gonna automatically make a bunch of tokens for you. And uh, yeah, they are white. So if you have any white things like Balefire Leash will give them plus one plus one automatically. So yeah, they can get buffed up pretty easy. Again, a impact call I've tried to talk about and uh, I don't know why I say, keep saying Palak. Is that a food Palak? I, am I thinking of Palak Paneer? I, I think I said that wrong too. Mirror Style Master we've also talked about. So remember, this does have to attack, but any modified creature, it will make attacking modified creature, it'll make a copy of. So abusable, so easily abusable. Threefold Thunder Hulk, ba ba ba. I don't, three, threefold Thunder Hulk, okay. Seven, zero, zero. Super easy to cheat in. So when it enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it, great. And whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, create a number of one, one colors gnome artifact creature tokens equal to its power. Now there's a dog barking outside. <sighs> okay, you know what? Okay. Oh, today. Oh, this is a twinnings day, I tell you. I think you could probably still hear the dog, but anyway. You can also pay two sacrifice another artifact for a plus one plus one counter on threefold Thunder Hulk. Maybe, but. Probably you're going to be able to keep putting plus one plus one counters on him and like attacking and making all of these creature tokens again. So yeah, we got so many ways to just make these piles of token creatures. Uh, ETB double up enabling. So I've kind of divided this in two things, enabling the double up and then what you want to double. So mirror style master we talked about, calamity we talked about. Remember calamity cannot target legendary creatures. They have to saddle him and then non-legendary, okay? That's what's important. Legion's Initiative is another way we can like basically take everything off the battlefield, put everything back on and all those ETVs go off again. All right, so copying targets duplicate. When it enters the battlefield, it's going to exile. Yeah, exile target non-token creature. Exile is it's great to have exile options. Uh, Meteor Golem again enters the battlefield, destroy target non land permanent. Any non land permanent gone. So, if you, again, Calamity is going to make two copies of that, so you're blowing up like three th or two things or three things, including when he enters. So, yeah, just removal city. And in the, in, yeah, because Removal City needs a mayor, here's uh, the Druger Hedge Mage, the Dwarf Shaman. When it enters the battlefield, if you control two or more mountains, you may destroy a target artifact. Again, Wayfarer's Bobble, make sure you've got two mountains, two planes. Uh, we've got uh, with Smuggler's Share to get planes in, or no, that doesn't get planes in. What am I talking about? That makes treasure, but yeah. So if you need one, try to use Wayfarer's Bubble to fill in that whatever requirement you need. And when he enters the battlefield, if you control two or more planes, destroy target enchantment. This will destroy an artifact and an enchantment as long as you have two of the basic lands, which is not hard to do. We've got 11 of each basic land in the deck. So yeah, having two of each to double removal. If Calamity, Car makes a copy of the Druger, Druger, sorry, then you're removing four things with the two things entering. Yay, yay. Guess the right, Monk. Again, you just keep tapping down everyone's board every turn over and over and over until the game is over, which won't take very long. Finally, Havoc Eater. Now someone's using a doorbell. Fun. We get seven, five red, red for a three, three. You can cheat him in. He's flying and when he enters the battlefield for each opponent, go up to one creature, target creature that opponent controls, put X plus one plus one counters on Havoc Eater where X is the total power of the creatures goaded this way. This is so good. You're gonna like 
have this come in attacking is immediately going to goad things so they can't block. And then, yeah, you put this pile of plus one plus one counters, and then they have to go attack with those creatures and probably lose those creatures. So this is like removal with extra steps and you get plus one plus one counters. Crazy. Okay, so this has been Shadow Facts. Um, is it free? I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed building it. I think it's a really interesting mechanic to build around. Now there's a whole bunch of more noise. Fun. Anyway, take it easy.